Learn how a structured web design process can help you deliver effective websites faster and more efficiently. What's up, Renee experts? Are here at Design, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to design a company website the strategic way. So every website needs to attract visitors and help people understand the product or the service and the company behind it, right? So this can be done through the right visuals, the content, and the interactions, which means that every element of your site needs to be designed strategically. So everything from how the website looks, the colors and the fonts you are using, to the content itself the headlines and the paragraphs so that the design of a website is extremely important but what actually sells is the words so apart from good design you also need to have a clear strategy on what content you should create and how to structure it so in this video i will teach you to do just that i will walk you through my seven step web design process and i will show you an example of a website that i designed for one of my clients from start to finish so I will cover every stage of my web design process, everything from the initial discovery session to creating the wireframes and then writing the messaging and then to the design and the development phase, of course. So that way you can get an overview of how web designers work if you are a business owner or it can help you optimize your process if you are a designer yourself. And I know that you want to see the end results. So here is the wireframe and the final design of that new website. And you can see it live at prettydigital.com. But before I talk about the steps that I took that led me to that final design, it's important to remind ourselves what makes a great website in the first place. So I probably don't have to explain why having a great website is important to any business because we all know that, right? But what makes a website great? So every designer will go on telling you how design is extremely important. And then every copywriter will argue that the copy is actually more important than design. So you've guessed that right. The visual and the verbal identity, they are both equally important and they need to work together. So a great website is not just about awesome design and animations and interactions because what actually sells is the words that you use. So how you tell your brand story. So we can basically judge an effectiveness of a website by the three following criteria. Is the website clear to understand? Does it look good? And does it call for an action? Now, let me explain each of those principles shortly. So first, your website needs to be clear and easy to understand. And a lot of entrepreneurs make this common mistake of thinking that they have to absolutely include everything on their website. And so they end up making their website super busy, which confuses people. And that's why you shouldn't go in length talking about how great your company is, but you should rather be very selective with the words that you use and focus more on your customers or your clients and talk less about yourself. And for this, I run storytelling workshops with my clients, which helps me understand the business and then craft key pieces of messaging for that business. So now the second very important thing when it comes to creating an effective website is of course the design. Does your website look presentable? So your website must be consistent with your overall branding. So before you start designing your website, you should have a solid logo and identity to work with and preferably a solid style guide as well. And I would urge you to pay close attention to consistency here with the rest of your marketing materials so that you can create that unified brand image across the board. And then the third and very important important thing to consider when creating your website is to make sure that it's designed with a clear objective in mind. And so it must be easy to navigate and it must include calls to action because ultimately your website is your marketing tool, right? So whether you sell products or offer services, you want people to take some kind of an action. So you want them to either simply buy your product or schedule a call or request a quote or donate to a charity or attend an event or whatever it is. I'm saying this because why it might seem obvious to you, I can see often people making the same mistake of assuming that clients or customers will find their way if they wanted to engage. But in reality, it doesn't work like that. They usually have a lot of options and so you need to make it easy for them and your website must be optimized so it can become your selling machine. So it doesn't have to come across as salesy or pushy, not at all. And I will teach you how to do just that. So with those three basic web design rules in mind, now let's start 
start with the first step in my process, which is discovery. So first you need to run a discovery session with your clients so that you can understand the business and its objectives. So now the problem is that most designers ask the wrong types of questions during their meetings with clients. So when a client approaches them with a new website project, they tend to ask questions like, what colors do you like? Or how and why you started your company? But these questions are irrelevant because a business website is not a place to celebrate yourself. You need to use the language that will resonate with your customers. So you need to have some clarity on how to write your brand story in a way that speaks to them. So that the right questions to ask here are, for example, who is your target audience? What problems do you solve for them? And how do they feel after solving these problems? And is there a meaningful value that you add to their lives? Now, these are just some examples of simple questions that you can ask your client during the discovery session. But if you want to learn more, then check out my storytelling guide. I use this structured framework to help me run my storytelling workshops with my clients so that I can extract all the necessary information from my client and then organize it in a way so I'll be able to use it. So later I'm going to be able to combine these insights with my own research and then I will also add some extra details from other documents that my client emailed me like their internal presentations or pitch decks and so on and all of these findings will allow me to write their brand story. So here I just collect those key pieces of information that will help me later on craft the actual copy, the headlines and the paragraphs for our new website. Okay, so before I show you how to write the messaging, let's first actually sketch a simple wireframe. So you need to create a wireframe in order to get some clarity on what type of sections you will need the content for, right? So here you basically just prepare a rough sketch of your website to figure out what content you will need to create later on. So a wireframe is just a low fidelity kind of a sketch of how you want to structure your page. And you can draw a wireframe on a piece of paper or you can use some dedicated tools like Balsamic, Azure or Just in Mind. Otherwise, you can even use tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe XD or Figma. It's all really up to you. Me personally, I just like to create rough sketches on paper. And since I'm a designer, it's easy for me to imagine how the website can look like. And alternatively, you can support yourself here with some UI kits or premium templates to help you figure out how can you lay out the content. But anyways, there are certain principles and good practices to follow here when structuring the content for your homepage. So here are the seven common sections every homepage should include. First, we have the header, the stakes, the guide, the explanation, the plan, the proof, and the footer. Now, let me explain shortly on each of those sections so that you can learn how to create them effectively. So first, we have the header, which is the very top of your website before the fold. So we naturally have the logo here in the top left corner, maybe some menu. And for this, you will just most likely need a short headline and a little paragraph underneath and a call to action. So in the header, you should use very few words to let people know what the company offers. And I will explain all that later. But here you can also have some photos or graphics, or we can even embed a video and so on. Now, second is the stakes. Now in this section below, you just explain what you are saving your clients from, right? What's at stake in your story? So you simply just use the challenge part of the storytelling script and you just list here these problems or key pain points that your customers face. And it could be done in the form of bullet points with questions or statements, for example, or alternatively, you can just go positive here and talk about your value proposition. So you can list some benefits or you can do both, which is what actually I did for this client. So that we talk about the problems that the brand solves for their customers, but we also talk about the benefits that the customers get or how they feel once the problems are solved. So third, we have the guide. And now in the section below, you should introduce yourself as the brand or a person who can solve your customers' problems or help them enjoy these benefits for that matter, right? So basically, you will probably just need some headline with a paragraph or two, and you can also reserve some space for your team photos or your product photos here or whatever you want to do. Now, fourth, we have explanation. And the next section could be there a video or a paragraph that invites your customers into the story. So here you basically just provide more information and this is also where you will improve your SEO. So again, you will need a short headline, but this time we can have a longer paragraph. And what I like to do is to have a button that unfolds more text when you click it. So that way you won't over 
overwhelm your visitors with heavy text, but if they want to, they can read the whole thing as well. Next, we have the plan. So another section you should have on your website is the plan, which means the plan, your brand, which is the guide, gives your customers, which is the hero, to help them achieve success. So this is simply where you reveal the path a customer must take to do the business with you. And of course, you need to simplify these steps here. And the goal here is to leave the client's confusion and to make it look easy. So then we have the proof. Now somewhere by the end, we must also include some testimonials or endorsements. But at minimum, you should show the logos of clients that the company has worked with. Or either way, you need to show some proof that you can deliver on that promise, which will help you build that trust. And finally, you wrap it all up with a footer where you can list all links to other pages and you can repeat the logo here. But the common practice is to make the footer black or dark. And you can also include here links to social media, perhaps the company address and the phone number. But remember that you don't have to have these sections in that exact order and you can just mix them up. And these are just seven basic sections, right? So besides the header and the footer, of course, they are like the covers of a book, but inside you can have more or less chapters depending on your project. And if you follow my process, I assure you, you'll be able to easily create additional sections by just reusing those insights from your storytelling script. For example, you could have a section where you can give people your pricing options or your packages. That's a common practice for SaaS companies, as you probably already know, right? But anyways, remember to repeat your calls to actions very often, if not on almost every section of your homepage. And once you have your wireframe done, then you're ready to write the messaging. So next, I spent some time refining my notes from the storytelling workshop. And here is where you basically just transform the storytelling script into the actual copy for each section of your website. And here I may supplement some information, of course, from other documents that my clients have emailed me, some background information, like from internal presentations or other marketing materials, right? And I also check out competitors' websites and what type of messaging they're using. And next, with all that input, I simply look at my wireframe and then I create a new Word document. I just start writing the actual copy, the headlines and the paragraphs and the text for bullet points and so on. So starting with the header, the headline in the header must be clear and concise. You must use very few words to let people know what the brand offers. So the header basically needs to answer three questions that all visitors ask themselves when they land on a new website. So what do you offer? How it will make my life better? And what do I need to do to buy from you? So that's it. Don't try to be clever or cute here, but rather just focus on clarity. And remember, you only get one chance to make that first impression and according to to Microsoft research study, the first 10 seconds are the most critical. And it's because within those 10 seconds, the visitor will decide whether to stay or leave. So you need to hook them and get their attention. And it doesn't mean that you have to be clever or cute, not at all. Your header should be clear and use simple language and speak directly to your customers. Now that might be a challenge to write something concise yet unique and catchy, right? So it often takes a few tries to get things right and it applies to all sections of your website. Just look at the wireframe and then identify what type of content you will need. And next, look at your storytelling script and then start just using these insights to craft the actual messaging. And when you are writing the content, also remember to consider the brand's tone of voice and its personality, which might influence your word selection and your general style of writing. So the next section is probably stakes, right? So here you can simply just list these problems that you solve and can come in for of questions or statements as bullet points or whatever you choose to do. Just be creative here. Just remember that your wireframe is just a sketch so that you can always change things if you need to. And you may also decide to change the order of sections if you come to a conclusion that it will work better as a whole. So as a result of this step, you just want to end up with the actual content written for all of those seven sections or more in a Word document. And alternatively, you can now just go back and create a digital version of your wireframe 
with the actual copy if you want to, that's even better. But either way, we should end up at this point with a Word document and a sketch of the homepage, which is a very efficient way of working with web designers. So whoever is going to be working on your website, they will be provided with all of that, which makes the whole process a lot easier and smoother. And this much likely will save you a ton of headache and wasting time and money on revisions that seem to never end. So clients are engaged from the get-go and designers get a green light at each step of the process. Okay, so since you have your client's approval on the messaging and the overall wireframe of your homepage, then it's time to dress it all up with the actual high fidelity design, right? So here is where you basically just create high fidelity designs based on the wireframe and by following your star guide. Now, my client came to me for a full rebrand so that we now have a star guide that I can follow when designing that new website. But if you don't have a star guide for your brand yet, and if you want to learn how to create one, then check out my other tutorials. So assuming that you already have at least the new logo and some specifications on fonts and colors that you want to use, then it basically all comes down to putting all of this together. So from now on, this is going to be basically a downhill journey. This is because there are so many web design tools out there and there are almost endless ways in which you can design and develop your website. Now, depending on your project and the client's budget and the scope of work, you may design a website from scratch from a blank page or alternatively, you can do what I did. You can just purchase a quality template that kind of fits your needs more or less. And so these premium templates, they often come with the actual design file. So for example, mine came with a Figma file so that I was able to save so much time because I didn't have to design everything from scratch. All of these common website components like the hero sections and the listicles and quotes and so on, they're already there. Think about it. Someone spent a lot of time and resources trying to figure out all of these things. Someone created a beautiful, fully responsive template with a series of UI elements that you can just simply reuse and make it your own. So I purchased the Consultancy X Webflow template and I modified it. So I replaced the logo, the colors, the fonts, and the whole content in that Figma file. And then I made it into a custom web design. But if you want to design your website totally from scratch, hey, be my guest. I've designed many websites from the ground up as well, just like this one for Medijuana, for example. But either way, this is not a typical tutorial where you learn how to actually use those many web design tools like Figma or Adobe XD. My intention was just to give you an overview of my overall web design process process and focusing especially on what precedes the actual design and development. So whichever method you go with, finally you simply just need to present that web design to your client and get their approval. And once you settle on that design part, then the next step would be naturally to develop that website and that may involve some coding. So you can just code your website yourself, the HTML and CSS, or you can just use some visual no-code tools like Webflow for example. So my client initially wanted me to use use the WordPress CMS on the back end as they are used to it. But I was able to convince them to go with the Webflow platform. Now you should know how you're going to develop your website before you even started the project. Because if you decide to design the website from scratch, then you will naturally need to develop that website from scratch as well. So if you don't know how to write the code, then you can use something like Webflow, for example. And another popular way is the Elementor Visual Builder that you can use on WordPress. So again, as same as with the design part, I'm not going to go into details here because there are so many ways in which you can develop your website. So you already know that I purchased for my client a template that came with a Figma file and I customized that file in the previous step and now I naturally just need to make the same exact changes but to the actual live template that I just installed on my Webflow account. So basically I just go ahead and start making the same changes to the template so that it reflects that design file. So that way I'm basically able to have this homepage up and running in no time. But then of course, I will have to develop other pages as well, right? Other pages that I haven't designed in the previous step. However, if your project requires to do so, you can wireframe and design each of these pages as well. But since this project is just a simple business website for a B2B company, we just needed to get that homepage design approved. And now based on that, I can just go ahead and create other pages. And this may require you to design some new sections or new UI elements as well. Like for example, I created this team member section here or certification section right there and so on. And then I also created a JavaScript 
interaction on the contact page because I thought it's kind of a fun playful element of a surprise. It makes the whole website a bit more interesting and engaging. And once I'm done, I simply just publish that website online and which is just a click of a button on Webflow and then I just present that website to my client. So once the website is live with all of its visuals and content in place, then we are ready for testing it, right? So here you just need to basically check your website for coding and usability issues like the page speed, broken links, responsiveness issues and so on. So inevitably some hiccups may occur as a result of small coding mistakes and now it's time to just fix them before you actually launch that website officially so that if something is not working properly, for example people can't send the form or they can't click the button or there is a 404 error and that's going to lead to a bad customer experience and you don't want your visitors to live with a bad first impression of your brand and perhaps the last one. So make sure that all links work and all of your animations render properly and make sure that the website looks good on all devices and using all popular browsers. And you will also need to connect the website to their ecosystem and prepare for launch. So for example, my client wanted to embed their HubSpot contact form and I had to use the API to be able to install Google Maps on their contact page. So you also need to test the site speed here and perhaps optimize some images and minify the CSS and the JavaScript and so on. Also remember to do some on-page SEO here like setting the page title, the description, the cover image for social media and so on. So once you've tested things out and you are confident that everything is 100% done, then it's just time for everyone's favorite part. So here is where you just plan that launch and schedule maintenance or website updates. So which is basically all about publishing that new website under the company's official domain, which is peritydigital.com in this case. And then you have to announce it to the world, right? And you should consider here planning that launch and your communication strategies, because you may want to announce it on social media or send an email campaign or do both. And a key thing to remember here is that the launch is not the end of the job. This is because clients will usually need some maintenance for at least a few weeks. So the beauty of the web is that it's almost never finished. And once the website goes live, you can start monitoring your analytics and you can even do some A-B testing. And that can make you want to just fine tune some things yeah, like your messaging or your visuals on the website. And at the delivery stage, I also record some tutorials for my clients on how to edit their own website using the Webflow CMS. So I simply just identify what my client will need to change on their website and then I just screen record myself doing it. So for example, adding a new team member, adding a new office location, updating text and images. So I usually just include links to tutorials in their style guide and so that my client have everything in one place. Now some conclusions. Great websites don't happen by accident. They are the result of strategic thinking and clear messaging and design excellence. So following a proven web design process will allow you to stay focused and use your creativity more efficiently. So now, how long does it take to design a website? People always ask me this question, but the truth is that there are many variables. And so it depends on the designer and how fast she or he can be and how accurate they can be and what's the scope of the project and how responsive the client is and how many revisions you have to go through and so on. So for example, the Pariti website took me about two weeks to complete everything from start to end. However, when it comes to creating a company website, it's very important to not skip the initial steps of preparation and just see what my client said. Arek has a clear branding process. He helped us best articulate our market and cultural messages and the workshop went fantastic and we were able to launch our website very quickly. You see, the problem is that entrepreneurs and creatives alike, they often tend to just skip the initial steps of preparation and they just jump straight into the design. And they often assume that some dummy text and stock images will do for now and they can replace that later and why now focusing on the website design itself. However, it doesn't really work like that because most of what web design actually is, is actually about laying out that content, the text and the graphics or photos on a page. So therefore the content will very much influence your design choices so that you must figure that out first. And another very important thing to remember here is visual consistency with your overall branding. So if you don't have a solid brand identity and then even the best looking website won't hold up 
as a whole brand. So that's why creating a website should never be the first step in branding a business. So prior to creating your website, you should get a well-designed logo and identity first and preferably some sort of a style guide as well. So a solid style guide will ensure that your website looks on brand and a solid discovery will ensure that your messaging is on point. So ultimately it's all about the creativity and the skill set, but also you must stay focused and you must make informed strategic decisions along the way. Now, if you are a creative, then check out my storytelling guide and you can use my structured framework to help you run next discovery session with ease. Now, if you want to learn some technical skills, I highly recommend the Webflow Academy, which is for free. But if you're a business owner who is looking for a new website, then just schedule a call with me and let's discuss your project. But anyways, don't forget to check out the end result live at peritydigital.com. And I hope you learned something new today. Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button and hit notification bell as well to let you know when we've got new videos coming out. This was Arek Dvorniczak from eBay Design and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.